Today we're going to be counting down the top 15 Springbok rugby players of all time from the proud rugby nation of South Africa. Three time winners of the World Cup. Given the All Blacks a clap on many occasions, the Wallabies, the Poms, they've all had a turn. So today we're going to be going through the best of the best South African rugby players of all time. We're going to be, some of the great names are going to appear on your screen shortly. And what better place to start than the Queen's favorite vehicle, the Rolls Royce. The Rolls Royce of fullbacks, Mr. Andre Joubert. 1995 World Cup winner with South Africa, beating New Zealand in extra time thanks to the boot of Joel Stransky. But Andre Joubert was inspirational throughout that tournament, playing with a broken arm in the semi-final against, against France in near flooding conditions at Kings Park. Blistering pace in his earlier days, great side step, could just glide past defenders, vision to let wingers like James Small go. You could say the first modern day sort of fullback, the best modern day fullback at the start of professionalism by a long way. Highly respected around the world, a great sevens player, a real thoroughbred athlete. You just got to look at that guy's hamstrings, they're just a shape by Zeus, and for that, and his legendary moustache is good enough to get the Rolls Royce Andre Joubert in at number 15 fullback in the South African top 15 rugby players of all time. Coming in at right wing number 14, this is a very tough decision. You've got World Cup winner James Small who never let John Alomu score a try against him and Alomu was 128 kilos at the time and could run 110.5 but he couldn't get around James Small who was he was only 95 kilos 5'11 but equally as fast and very very ferocious rest in peace Smalley but there's one name that's synonymous with wings in South Africa and that is the Prince of Wings, more royalty, Carl Duplessis, who played, who won the Curry Cup many, many times with Western Province in, in, in South Africa when they had that great rivalry with Northern Transvaal. Represented the, the Springboks a couple of times in the 80s, but another career that was cut short by apartheid. Blistering place. Magic sidestep could just weave past people and you weren't going to catch Carl Duplessis once he's gone. A real thinking man's rugby player. Unfortunately his rugby genius didn't convert into coaching but on the field as a leader of the back line, as a leader of men and just a, a great professional and gentleman. The great Carl Duplessis comes in on the right wing number 14. And then on to outside center, a lot of a lot of good outside centers to choose from. In the in the modern era, you've got Jacques Fourie, 2007 World Cup winner, magic player, pace, power, the complete package. You got Yarpi Mulder, 1995 World Cup winner, smashed Lomu on a couple of occasions. Not, a, not quite as an attacking threat as some of the other players, but on defense was extremely strong as, and, and was a big 100 kilo outside center with wheels and you can't really ask for much more than that. Except for the great Donny Gerber, who was another unlucky Springbok in, in the 1980s that wasn't able to play because of the, of the sanctions and the political turmoil. But he had tremendous speed, a real physical specimen, a, one of the probably the best sidestep in South African rugby history. Although the person at 12 might have something to say about that, but Tony Gerber, an absolute genius, a much loved figure in South African rugby, a player's player. And he was scoring tries until he was 36. He, he had a long career. Unfortunately, he didn't make the kind of money that the modern day players are making so he didn't retire as comfortably as he should have for such a great player but he stayed true to his eastern province i don't think he ever left the eastern province which is a smaller sort of club 
and but whenever he put the green and gold on he always performed well into his 30s and for that reason the great Don Gerber is in at 13. Coming in at 12 inside centre was a very very difficult decision for me because I've always been a massive fan of Franz Stein at 12. When he, when he came in at the 2007 World Cup and replaced uh, Jean de Villiers, who went home injured, he transformed that team. He is one of the reasons South Africa won the 2007 World Cup. The perfect inside centre. 105 kilos, could run the 100 in under 11 seconds, and can kick a 60-meter field goal and can tack you, tackle you out of your boots. In later years, his fitness kind of let him down a bit, but in his earlier years, full of muscle, full of power. I remember covering the, the one Springbok game at the press conference. The two guys that looked the biggest were... Bistam Tarawiriwa, who plays prop and is 125 kilo, and Franz Stein was absolutely coming out of his jacket, looked like the Incredible Hulk, a real specimen. But if you look back in time through the annals of history, somebody who has a song by David Kramer written about him, Fata la Fata la Manakis. The great Monarchies Rue, who played in the 60s and 70s. A farmer from the, the great Karoo, a no-nonsense man. He used to tackle cows on his farm as practice. He wasn't a tall man, but, but quite stout and incredibly fast. A magic size tip, a, a size tip as good as Christian Cullen, to put it into modern, modern-ish rugby terms. Electric speed for his time a real champagne rugby player similar to the a sort of a French style rugby rugby back some people say he was a little bit selfish but a fantastic player and played in, in the magic a magical era of Springbok rugby where they I think they gave the the Lions a, a proper hiding when they came out here moving swiftly on to to left wing Number 11, another tricky one. From the 80s, you got Gerry Gomez's electric speed, great side step, and the best hairline in the business. Just a, a really fun rugby player to watch. But there's only really one choice on the left wing for South Africa. Top try scorer in South African rugby history by quite some way is Brian O'Banner. World Cup winner from 2007, electric pace, does it, it, before he bulked up he could do the 100 and sort of 10-2. He could play outside centre as well, but wing was his best position. Not, once he's gone, nobody was going to catch him. He only got, there was only one man in, in his whole career that ever left him for dust, and that's Nguenya, who was almost doing a 10 flat for the 100. But other than that, Brian Abana, great on defence, extre extremely potent on attack and a thinking man's rugby player, good enough for the all-time on the left wing. Not too much debate about fly-off though, number 10. You could say Joel Stransky for his, for his, his last-minute drop goal that won the 1995 World Cup. You could say Gerald Bosch, which, but really in reality, there's only one boss, nasty boss comes in at number 10 fly half in the greatest spring box of all time. A real general of the back line, often played captain. In his earlier days, he was actually quite a running fly off, which he doesn't get credit for. Good pace. And uh, it's worth going back and watching a couple of the early games of, of Nars Buddha. Really quite, quite a running fly off. And he came towards the, towards the end of his career, he got, he got known for playing 10-man rugby, just booting into the corners and letting, letting, the, letting the ball do the work. But uh, in his earlier days, he was quite an attacking force. And uh, nine-time Curry Cup winners, Northern Transvaal with, with, with Nas playing, the record speaks for himself. Another player that didn't get to play nearly enough rugby at international level. But those were the politics of the time. There's nothing he could do about it. But there's no disputing Nas Buddha, top fly half of all time for South Africa. Sure, this is quite a list. Getting to number nine, ladies and gentlemen. 
Not too much uh, debate about this one. Fafta Klerk might have something to say about it. Uh, South Africa's uh, recent World Cup winning fly off, who, who's, who's a real powerhouse, 89 kilos of pure muscle, who would be happy to wrestle a 120 kilogram prop, prop to the floor. He can kick, he can run, he can sidestep. But there can only be one US Van der Vestesen, who is my fly off, South African fly off of all time. 1995 World Cup winner. Fantastic speed, the speed of a winger, an eye for the gap, and a great tackler. He smashed Lomu in an important tackle in the 1995 World Cup that could have arguably saved a try. Did great things at Northern Transvaal. Had a bit of a shady, shady career off the field, but rest in peace, just on the field, untouchable as fly as as scrum half. And I'm sure even Kiwis would have to admit that he was one of the best scrum halves of all time, not just in South African rugby. Then moving on to the pack, the top eight forwards in South African rugby. Starting at 8th man, there's been some fantastic 8th men in South African rugby. Mornay Duplessis, Gary Teichman, the list goes on and on. But somebody for me who stands head and shoulders above anybody, this would be my guy as my top 8th man in world rugby. Current South African 8th man, World Cup winner, Dwayne Vermeulen. Tough as teak. I'd say he's the toughest rugby player. In the world. I saw him at the, at the recent World Cup getting dumped on his head. I thought he was paralyzed. He gets up and carries on playing the rest of the game. The hardest tackler in world rugby. Extremely tough. He's also good in the line out. A good jumper. A good team player. The ultimate man's man. The ultimate hard man. I challenge you to find a stronger rugby player than Dwayne Vermeulen. Which is good enough to get him in at number 8 in my top 15 Springboks of all time. Flank is a very, very difficult position. There's a lot of great players, but for me, the Mac Daddy, the OG, is Mr. Ruben Kruger. 1995 World Cup winner. A really, a, a workhorse that didn't do have a lot of the glitz and glamour of some of the other players, but he was there grafting. Get a great fetcher, a great ball carrier, a hard man, no nonsense player that you would go, well, you'd want to go to war with Ruben Kruger if you had to. Heaven forbid you had to, but he was that sort of player. The same can be said for number six. Our other flanker can only be Mr. Skulk Berger. 2005 IRB Rugby Player of the Year, two time Rugby World Cup winner. Came back from a busted neck, serious injuries, but this guy just keeps coming and coming. He was he was one of the original fetchers in the modern game. He was prepared to put his body on the line. Very similar to Dwayne Vermeulen. Those two playing together fit. Those teams seldom lose. Which is why Mr. Skulk Berger comes in at number six. We've got some honorable mentions at flank. Andre Fenter, an absolute machine. He was in that great Nick Mallett's 17 winning streak side of the late 90s. A fantastic ball runner. Big speed for a big man. You've got Gary Tashman, a great leader. The likes of Wayne Fivey, who, was ne who never really reached his potential. And a host of other fantastic flanks. Heinrich Brousseau. The list is endless, and in the in the, in the and Rob Lowe, an absolute man's man, the captain of the of the 1980 Springbok side, a real real good dude. Moving on to lock, ladies and gentlemen, this is a very very difficult decision. There's been a, a plethora of great locks in in South African rugby history, but one that springs to mind automatically is the hero of the 1956 Springboks versus Lions series, Mr. Frick Dupree. A massive man for his day. Broad shoulders could just tower through people. He was only six foot three, but in those days, in the fifties, six foot three was equivalent of a six foot seven now. Really a physical specimen, Mr. Frick Dupree, an intelligent rugby player. 
Moving on to number four, Frick Dupree's locking partner. I need an enforcer, I need a hard man, I need a big man of the modern game, and who better than Urban Itzabeth, the complete rugby player. Great in the lineouts, fantastic scrummer, powerful runner, can run through three or four guys, full of muscles, pushing six foot ten, a great specimen. You could argue that the likes of Mark Andrews, Bucky's Buerta, Victor Madfield, Corbus Visa, they all got a shot to get in there. But for me, the physicality and the raw power, the horsepower of Urban Elizabeth is enough to get him over the line in a very tightly contested locking position for the top 15 Springboks of all time. But hey, somebody has to get in there. I'm sure you've got your own ideas for this list, so leave your comments below and tell me where I went right and tell me where I went wrong. Moving on to prop the big man in the front. We're going to have to go back to the 80s, Mr. Flip van der Merwe, a beast of a man, six foot five inches, 133 kilograms, a massive man that you wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of. The South African scrum has always had big men, 130 kilogram men. That's what differentiates us between the likes of Australia is that just don't have that, that big, big human being. Our farm stock is really tailor-made for playing rugby. Moving on to number two. Is there a doctor in the house? The trained medical prof the professional who's a bit of a, who was a bit of a hooligan on the field. But in my opinion, the best hooker that has played for South Africa is Mr. Uli Schmidt, Northern Transvaal's favorite son. Won many, many curry cups with the Nuit Transvaal. Unfortunately, missed out on the 1995 World Cup. He was just a little bit too old by that stage, but he's still a tremendous player. A stalwart of, of, of Northern Transvaal rugby in in the nineties and early to, in the eighties and early nineties would always put his body on the line, give a hundred percent every game. Fantastic in the lineup, great scrummager, always found his jumpers, and it was and his real strength was in the loose, great ball carrier. He was almost like having another flank. And you could say he was the, the prototype, prototype of the modern hooker. Number one, there can only be number one. This is easy peasy. One of the biggest men in South African rugby. One of the most loved men in South African rugby. Two-time Rugby World Cup winner, 1995. And he got his act together and came back for the 2007 Rugby World Cup. 130 kilograms of South African beef. Mr. Osterant, good enough for number one on the list. No quibble about that. So that's my top 15 Springboks of all time. Let me know what you think below. And we'll catch you next time on Africa Sideways.